So we're going to start uh, to do an infrared visible composite of these two images were which were taken in Barataria Bay in uh, Louisiana um, in uh, the late spring. So uh, what I'm going to do is open them both up in Photoshop and um, see, them, see them both both open up. But the problem is that they're not lined up. So um, what we're going to have to do is actually copy all of this and paste it into or on top of this image. Now what I have to do is get these to line up so you know you can see that they're somewhat close but not super close so I'm gonna actually change this to the multiply mode and then um, you can kind of see both of them. If that doesn't really work, if it's, if it's too much, you can try doing uh, lighten or screen Lighten works pretty well. So uh, I'm, I hit Apple T. I believe that's uh, uh, free transform. And then, so I'm going to do a quick version right now where I just kind of rotate it and drag it into place. It looks like I'm going to have to do scaling and rotating. So we're not going to get a huge overlap here, but we'll get enough to, to kind of prove out what we're trying to do here. I'm holding down shift as I'm shrinking it just to maintain the proportions. And then at a certain at a certain uh, juncture, we're going to want to switch to a different kind of distortion. So here I'm starting to get the lining up pretty good there. You can use the arrow keys to kind of get it very close. Uh, helpful to zoom out sometimes. But as we get really quite close, you can zoom in and see that we're going to have to get more precise. So I'm going to right click on here and choose the uh, distort tool. And distort, instead of just allowing you to rotate and scale, allows you to grab each corner in. So let's see. See how I'm getting these to line up just right? And then scrolling across, I'll get these over here. Just about right. You can see how these are beginning to line up properly. And I'm going to go back because actually that last transition kind of affected what I did earlier. And then at this point, it might be helpful to actually switch the mode again. Multiply is not helpful, so I'm going to go to screen. You can also just leave it on normal and then change the opacity. So I think we're pretty good here. I can't really see how we would we would get a lot better. Perhaps there's another type of overlay that we can use, but um, you know I, I tend to stick to lighten and multiply and screen. Um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and that should uh, kind of fix this. Notice that down here it's not so good, and then up here it's not so good. But up here it's pretty good. So what we can do is actually do Apple T again, or, or Control T, depending on if you're on Windows. And then I'm going to go to the Warp tool. And what Warp does is it allows you, it gives you this do any, any stage that you've done. So I'm, I'm just going to go in here and then try to get these areas to line up without affecting the other areas too much. That worked pretty well. I'll bring this down here back out. It's kind of like a sheet of rubber, so you're always going to have some difficulty getting them to line up, uh, if, especially if the cameras were at slightly different positions, or things like that. But, um, you know, I usually find that you can get it pretty close. So alright, we're doing alright here. Maybe I'll bring this down just a tiny bit. And then I'm gonna say OK again. <clears throat> I 
This takes a little longer, this type of distortion. All right, now I'm going to go back to normal. And what we have are two overlapping images. We can really only use the space within this, but we'll, we'll wait till later to cut this down to size. For the time being, what I'm going to do is actually back up these so that we have a uh, kind of a, a baseline to work with. So I'm only going to work with the copies. I'll call this infrared. Or actually, I can call it NIR because it's near infrared. And then I call this one, uh, well, I'm actually going to make two copies of this. And then what we'll do is name this one red or R and this one green or G. I'm going to throw away the blue information um, because the human eye can only see three colors. So we need to make space for the near infrared by getting rid of the blue channel. And then what we'll do is this one here, here let me turn off the others. I'll desaturate it because this is not... Um, it's not a real color, it's just um, what the, the camera interprets infrared light as, since it's not really expecting to have to do infrared light, so it just, uh, it's a blend of all three colors. So I'm going to zero that out as, as, as grayscale. And then on these guys, I'm actually going to go in and click on, uh, let's see, it's Channel Mixer. It should exist in most versions of Photoshop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, Display it black and white with a red filter for the red channel. Say OK. And what I'm doing here is actually choosing only the red information. If you want to see what this looks like, I'll go to the full color version and go to channels. You can actually look at each channel separately. And see how the vegetation especially looks quite different in each different color? This is taking that color information and presenting it as black and white uh, or as grayscale. So I'll do the same thing over here. I'm going to choose only the green information. Uh, where is that? Channel mixer. So black and white with a green filter. So you should be able to see the difference here. This is the um, green channel, and this one is the red channel. To confirm that, well, let's look at the red channel here, and we'll compare it to... Uh, oh, I have to turn off, turn that guy off. I'm going to compare it to the red channel here. So that's exactly the same. So we know this is only red information, but it's being presented as black and white. Uh, all right, so I'll turn these back on. And then what I'm going to do is actually double click next to the name, and that gives you the, the blending options. You can also go up to here to, um, uh, what is it, uh, I think it's under layer, and then blending, blending options, but anyway, uh, it's faster to just double click. And then I'm going to choose the color I want to display it in. So the display color is distinct from the source color. So I'm going to choose red for display, and on this next one, double click, I'll choose green for display, and on this next one, I'm going to choose blue for display. And what we should get are three different color channels. Uh, I have the background information on. Uh, all right, so there's your, your blue information only, or uh, blue, blue information displayed, green information displayed in the blue channel. Turn that off. Here's your red information displayed in the green channel. And here's your near infrared information displayed in the red channel. If you turn all three on, they'll recombine into an image. And this is your NRG infrared composite. You can see down here that dot is actually the balloon, the shadow of the balloon. So if you zoom in on this, the highest uh, you know, amount of red corresponds to uh, photosynthesis. So uh, we can't interpret any information outside of this area, but it's interesting to leave that just to see how the overlap works. And, uh, and within this area, you can see that this front line is really photosynthesizing the most, that there's an area in there that's, uh, uh, that's a bit wider, and then there's this darker area back here. So uh, you can begin to pick out different zones. Uh, for example, this hot spot here is kind of interesting. And then what we can do is actually, if, if we really want to, we'll, we can copy this in front and then compare it. You have an idea then 
about um, how that how that composite compares to a regular visible light image. The last step, um, which you could do, is to actually uh, run auto layers on all three channels to really bring out some detail. Now, if you can't do any calibration to, you know, what is the maximum reflectivity and the minimum reflectivity, this is probably not a good step to take. But uh, I think it's interesting just to look at what happens uh, when you pull this out and, and see all the extra kind of uh, rich information in there. So I'll do that for all three channels. And then you see there's quite a bit more kind of a dynamic range per channel. Now you can save this as uh, you know uh, a TIFF or a JPEG. Um, I'm just going to choose a JPEG for the time being, and I'm going to call it uh, Barataria NRG, and it will flatten all the images together and save it. You might save uh, different composites with different suffix names like that, and that's about it. Thanks very much, and you can read more about this at publiclaboratory.org.